The Fujifilm community is a breeding ground for creativity and it's a great place to find inspiration especially if you're a newcomer to the ecosystem. Over the past few months there's one specific JPEG recipe that has garnered more attention than I can recount in the couple of years that I've shot on Fuji and that recipe is Classic Cuban Negative by Osan Birgi. It's a recipe that I've used and that delivers some interesting results across a variety of settings but especially shines when it comes to street photography. So in this video I'll take you on a walk of one of Seoul's most interesting districts for street photography, share some insights from the creator of this recipe and give some advice to photographers who want to experiment with recipes in their own work. As the name alludes to, Classic Negative is the base for this recipe and Classic Neg is based on Fuji Color Superior 100 from the 1980s I believe and that original film stock was designed to be an all-purpose stock with fine grain and accurate color rendering. Now Classic Neg as a film sim I feel seems to mimic that original stock pretty well and I feel like the slightly harder tonality of Classic Neg is what makes it so great for street photography especially when you dial in your grain to get it close to the Superior 100 on which it is based. So given just how overwhelmingly popular classic Cuban Neg has become, I decided that getting some input from the creator of this recipe would add another element to this video. And I must say thanks to Osan for taking the time to engage me on my questions. Osan works in software by day but uses photography as a creative outlet, shooting mainly in his home country of Switzerland. The inspiration for Classic Cuban Negative came when he switched to Fujifilm from Sony in 2023 and not being completely satisfied with the selection of recipes available, he decided to develop his own. While the genesis of this, of this recipe was ironically in Switzerland, it was actually on a trip to Cuba that Osan refined and tweaked the settings to his taste. To quote the creator, the rich colors, weather and people in Cuba inspired me to create a recipe that is definitely bolder than other recipes with a heavy white balance shift and high saturation. Osan says that he initially regretted naming it Classic Cuban Negative as it is not very catchy, but he wanted to show some love to the Cuban people. When I asked Osan why he thinks the response to, to this recipe has been so positive, he couldn't pinpoint one single reason, but he did note that there are apparently not many recipes based on Classic Neg that resonated with the Fuji community. Being based in Switzerland also helped, he says, as there aren't as many photographers there as in the USA, so it is easier for his images to stand out. You'll find that the color shift on this recipe runs quite reddish and so because of that Osan recommends not to use this for portraits or overcast days. This was also an observation that I had made and so somewhere in the middle of this session I tweaked the color shift to make it slightly less red than the box than what the box recipe settings suggest. And where you will get great results is on sunny days, preferably in locations that have a lot of greens, clouds and sky mixed into the scenes, as well as shortly before and after golden hour, according to Osan. If 
you're a fan of this recipe, then you're in luck because the creator has three other recipes that you can check out. And those are Summer Chrome, Cuban Ace, which is based on Riala Ace, and Vibrant Astia. And all of those, except for Vibrant Astia, can be found on Osan's website, which I will link below. As a final question to Osan, I asked him what advice he would give to photographers just starting to experiment with recipes in their own work. And his answer was to be creative and experiment as much as possible, not only with JPEG settings, but also with the exposure settings of the camera while using the recipes. The vibe changes completely when a recipe is intentionally over or underexposed. Thank you again to Osan for taking the time to answer my questions and be sure to follow him on his social media uh, which I will link below. noticed in the metadata descriptions on these images that a lot of these shots are taken around the 35mm focal length. And that's because I had originally planned on renting a 35mm lens for the shoot but ended up not being able to get one. I've spoken in a previous video where I used the Fujifilm 35mm f1.4 about how I've been enjoying the 50mm equivalent so much more these days and so I purposefully shot at this focal length for that classic street feel. I ended up going with my Sigma 18-50 to so that kind of explains why I shot like that and some shots you will notice are either slightly wider or tighter but hey that's the convenience of having a zoom lens and sometimes you can cheat. As we come to the end of this video, I quickly want to talk about this area, which is one that I have not really shown on this channel yet. Just north of central Seoul is Chongno, which is a pretty gritty and old school area. It's quite raw and grimy to be honest, but it is an area that is becoming super popular with younger crowds on the weekends especially. And within the space of just a few square kilometers, you've got ajumas getting their hair dyed, trendy cafes with long lines, drunken ajoshis playing board games, and one of Seoul's most visited tourist spots in Iksongdong. It's quite jarring to imagine all of these motifs packed into one area, but I hope that these images along with this recipe have given you a taste of this little slice of Seoul. And that brings to a close this episode of The Weekend Salary Man. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe as I document my journey using the Fujifilm ecosystem, sharing the gear and the settings that I use, all while showing you how I spend my downtime here in Seoul, South Korea. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.